What Causes a Blind Man to be Blind? That's what we're going to talk today in John 9. Wow, we had a big time in the festival of the booth in Jerusalem. And and now Jesus is passing by and he sees a blind man. And his disciples want to know, what caused this blindness? Was it this man's sin? Was it his parents that sinned? How, How does this happen? And it's funny, I think we think that way all the time. When we see someone who's in a bad situation, we wonder, wow, what went wrong with that person? What, what thing happened that wasn't great? Even in some churches, too, or even where my dad grew up, which is primarily why he was so angry about Christianity, if you had something happen to you, the accusation was there that you sinned, that you did something. You somehow brought this on yourself. Jesus says right here, it wasn't that this man sinned, and it wasn't that his parents sinned but that the works of God may be displayed in him. There's a time coming where we're going to be able to no longer work. And while I'm here with y'all, I'm the light of the world. Reading some of the commentaries and talking about this, God lets these things happen, and he therefore glories God through it. He maybe allows something to happen. And this was a very important point. Just because he allows something to happen doesn't mean he causes something to happen. And what's going to happen or what's likely to happen, it happens. There are lessons to be learned, I guess, in that. It may not happen. God is not causing these things. My friend said, does that mean we have free will? Well, yeah, it does mean we have free will because the choice is ours. The question I said is really, why didn't God stop it? Why didn't God stop this bad thing from happening? And the answer is, no matter what happens, God is going to show the glory of the Father through this. Life is full of pain, and life, things happen, and they are going to happen. It is not that this man sinned or his parents sinned. The nature of sin in the world causes all these bad things. Adam and Eve never sinned. We never sinned. No one after Adam and Eve ever sinned. None of this would be in the world. But we have free will and we chose wrongly. That is what causes this to happen. Not specifically any person's sin, but sin in general. And so then Jesus is talking about while he's the light in the world, you know, we're going to do these things. This pastor in Ontario too had a really insightful thing, but said, you know, what is it when Jesus is no longer in this world, is the light gone? And in all of the synoptic gospels we saw, Jesus said, don't hide your light. Don't put it under a basket. Be the light of the world. He charged us to take on this mission while we still can work. Be a time when we can't work in this world, but that's not going to be when Jesus goes back in his glorified body after the resurrection. We are still in this world. So he spat on the ground, he made mud. And again, I mentioned this in the Synoptic Gospels. We don't know why he does these things, But he smeared it on the guy's face and told him to go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. And the guy did that and he came back and he could see again. Why does he do this? And I think it's interesting that God uses many different methods, I guess, to heal people. And he doesn't have to do any of it. To the centurion, he just made the boy well. He went to Lazarus to resurrect him from the dead. The woman with the bleeding disease touches his robe. Is robe special? No. In this case, the man was blind. He couldn't see a robe or anything about this man. So he used something wet, something that guy could feel. In the case where a man was blind, he called a demon out. There's different ways of doing it. And I think God reaches us where we're at. He knows that we need a thing, a sign. A, a, you know, you see people all the time calls, calling Jesus out for a sign. Give me a sign. He knows what we need, how we need to experience things viscerally. There are no healing cloths. There's nothing. God will heal us through our faith. Whether we ended up buying a silly healing cloth from a TV preacher I saw back in the 80s, or we touched his tassels on his robe. God honors us with giving us that full human experience, which sometimes means having a sensory experience in our healing and in our 
ways too. Made Paul blind. I mean, he is there doing things with our human body to teach us lessons. I think that's what happens here. So then the neighbors see him and they said, oh, that guy was begging before and now he can see what happened. And so then the guy told, you know, I talked to Jesus. He told me to do these things. And then I was blind. And they said, well, where is he? What, you know, (laughs) what's going on? I don't know. I couldn't see. But now I see the Pharisees had seen that the man had been blind before. But this is Sabbath because, of course, it is. Jesus just likes to poke the Sabbath thing. And you're not allowed to make mud on Sabbath because that's like bricklaying, you know, you're not allowed to do that. And so it caused division and arguing. And some people said he's a prophet and there's just all the arguing. And then some people say, oh, well, he wasn't really blind. He was faking. He was just being a beggar, probably. So they go and talk to the guy's parents. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was blind from birth. He couldn't see. What? How is it that he sees right now? And the parents, they just, I think they wanted nothing to do with this. They said, you go talk to him. He's an adult. You can talk for himself. Whatever. I don't know if people said whatever back in the Bible times. But it said that they were the parents were afraid. And they were afraid to be excommunicated from the synagogue. So the parents just let it go. So then they called the man back again and said, what happened? You know, is the man who healed you a sinner? I think that whole accusation that he was a demon. Like, I was like, I don't know if he is or he isn't. I know that God only does things for people who are not sinners. Before I was blind, now I see. And then they asked, well, well, how did this happen? How did you open up your eyes? Do you also want to follow this guy? And it's funny because this beggar probably had no education. He was blind from birth, so he would never have gone to school. The beggar then says, look, he did an amazing thing. I don't know where he comes from. He opens up my eyes. And we know that God doesn't listen to sinners. So if anyone's worshiping God and does his will, God listens to him. You know, and this is not a theologian, but suddenly this very, I always think of, uh, you know, the simple wisdom comes out of him. All I know is blind. Now I see God doesn't listen to sinners. God listened to this man. He must be for man. And if this man weren't from God, how could he do any of these things? That is a question that Jesus asked them. Is, is John the Baptist from God or, you know, from man? Is, am I from God or from man? And they wouldn't answer the question. Here, this guy is just saying it outright. This man has to be from God. And so then they start accusing him. You're going to teach us. You, obviously, you're a sinner because you're blind. Wow. They excommunicated this man for this whole thing. Jesus comes back to the man, asks him if he believes in the Son of Man. And he says, who is that? So I could believe in him. You know, who is the Messiah? So I can believe in the Messiah. And Jesus says, you've seen him. I'm talking to you right now. And and the man worshiped him. And he says, for I come for judgment. I came into this world that those who do not see may see. And those who may see become blind. The Pharisees heard this because they were all in a very small town. Are you saying we're blind? And he says, you know what, if you were blind, you wouldn't have guilt. But now that you say that you see, your guilt remains. If they didn't get this, if this was beyond them, if they didn't understand this, if they said, I need the Son of Man, but I don't see him before me, that would be understandable. But they're saying, I see you right in front of me and I don't need what you're giving out. Now they're guilty of what they're doing because they did see, they can see. They are aware of the situation and they reject it outright. Wow. What I'm going to meditate on is the fact that when we know, we know. You know the, when we understand Jesus and the Son of God and the fact that he comes from the Father and power is given to him, that knowing, it makes us that we can see, that we have to understand our reliance is on God. When we see what we see and we still say, you know what, I can do what I want. I can take care of my problems the way I want. I can do all those things. I am cool with that. Then we're like those Pharisees who say, I understand. I understand the scriptures. I understand what you're saying. I understand who you're seeing. I understand what you're saying, and I still don't need you. Then that is a problem. That is when we're in trouble. And so having that arrogance to not fall before God and worship him and understand the fact that we need him all the time for sin in this world, for our sin, our parents' sin, everything. We need God in this world. 
we are blind in a spiritual sense, and God is going to give us the light of the world to see. What I'm going to pray about is that I always remember my reliance on God, that I always think about the fact that when I say I can take care of things, or even worse, let's say I worry about something, big bill comes in, and now I'm super worried, and I'm like, oh, how am I going to take care of that? How am I going to take care of that? Or I have sinned. How am I going to fix my sin? Doing the same thing the Pharisees are doing. We are demanding our independence from God and saying, I have to take care of this. I have to fix this. I don't need God to fix it. I'll figure out a way. Boy, I pray I don't fall into that. And what I'm going to share with others is the fact you don't have to be a great Bible scholar. In fact, being a great Bible scholar cause these Pharisees to be argumentative, not want God, not go near him, not want to have anything to do with him. But it was a simple, probably uneducated man who needed God more than anything that said, you know what? I don't know what logic you're going through. All I know is this man came from God and before I was blind and now I see. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for listening to the podcast. Please subscribe, tell a friend. And if you're interested in my other podcasts, and you can find them all at a better life in small steps.com. And I hope you have a great day.